Our Computex 2024 coverage is made possible by Azus, G-Skill, Fantex, Team Group, Lian Lee, Azrock, Corsair, XPG, Thermaltake, Clev, Montec, and Seasonic. What's up guys, I'm Stuart from GGF and we're here at a pre-Computex 2024 show and XPG have invited us to their headquarters to take a look at a secret screening on some new products coming out. So we have a few cases here, some of them support the new BTF form factor and we have some that don't. And we also have a awesome little gaming handheld PC. So first off, we'll be looking at three new cases from XPG. We have the Invader X BTF, the Invader X Pro BTF, and then the Invader X Mini over there far to my left. Now, touching base on this one over here, this one has received the IF award, basically for the design on this case. So that's pretty awesome for XPG to receive that. I'll just take this side panel off, actually. If it doesn't slide, it actually goes up, just so you're not getting any glare inside. Now, if you guys might be thinking, hey, I recently covered one of these on my channel. The difference is this is BTF, but the one I did cover also had BTF, but the main difference for this one is it supports BTF in both the ATX and also the MATX. Now, the difference is the one that I covered, it supported BTF in only MATX because originally when Azus launched the BTF, or sort of the form factor or however you call it, was originally in MATX. So that's all XPG could go by was their MATX platform, but now Azus has moved on to, this is their tough BTF. They've also got their Strix BTF. It's now in the ATX form factor. So of course, XPG had to do the case to support the ATX setup, and that's why they've launched this one over here. But basically, for you guys who aren't familiar with this chassis, uh, comes in the white and black. Once again, as I mentioned earlier, I'll put all of the uh, prices and ETAs for all of these products in the description, rather than me trying to remember all the prices, because this one comes in three SKUs, the next one comes in maybe one or two, and so on. It's gonna be like 10 different SKUs I'm gonna have to remember. So I'll put all those in the description, and they will be much more accurate for you guys. Uh, so touching base back on this one, as I said, BTF, and it will take normal non-BTF uh, motherboards. So if you do really like this case, uh, you can either go up this one or the previous one, and you can run a normal standard ATX board, which is what I did in the build for that one. And then we have the PSU shroud at the bottom, and then it can take your three fans on the side, three fans on the bottom, which is kind of different. It's more one on the very bottom, two on the PSU shroud blowing up to your GPU, and then one on the rear, and then three at the top. Now, of course, the build that I did in the case, the similar one of this was fully liquid cooled, but as you can see, this one is running their XPG all-in-one cooler. And I'll get some shots around the back so we can see how this BTF form factor actually looks in terms of cable management and things like that. So this here is the XPG Invader X Pro BTF. Now I did cover the similar chassis to this one at the start of the year at CES, and the main difference with this one is of course being the BTF. And here it's running the full Strix lineup of BTF for the motherboard and the GPU. Now before I take this glass off, one of the main features of the Invader X Pro is this gorgeous curved glass. Now the radius on this one isn't too bad, so the failure rate is pretty good from what I've been told. So I'll take this off. So the panoramic view from this one, you're also getting it from the top, you're getting it from the front, and then you're getting it from your main side as well. I'll just actually just pass this to someone so I don't drop that. Now the fans are a little bit noisy in here, they're cranked up, so I do apologize if that is feeding back into my microphone. As you can see in here, there are a whopping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven fans you can crank into this case, which I think is quite a lot. Now, I do believe there's gonna be one skew in this case that comes with eight fans. I wanna know your thoughts. Do you think you would like this case to be a bit cheaper that comes with no fans and then you can put your own preferred one in or just come with the stock eight fans that uh, XPG throw in, which will be their RGB fans. Now, some more features, which I covered in the same case earlier this year, is it comes with the screen down the bottom that is USB controlled and you can install their software and manage that. Some other features, of course, I mentioned it is the BTF. I'll get some shots around the back so we can see how the clearance is all done. From what I can see, there's heaps of clearance because this motherboard tray is quite protruded. And then we're running a 360 all-in-one cooler at the top. And this one here is the XPG Levante Pro all-in-one cooler, and it does have the screen as well. Now, more around the back, we have the side. You can see it's actually kind of tricky because the 360 along the top overlaps the uh, 360 on the side. So it looks like you've got either a 480 on the side 
or a 360 that's at the, on the top because this corner one actually acts as uh, either fan at the top. Now, of course, PSU down the bottom, and I do remember when I did do a build in this one, this does come off for easy access to access things like PSU cables and so on. And I think the fan, there we go. And then I don't wanna pull this out too far because that does have the screen attached, but you have a heap of access down the bottom as well for your PSU and so on. Now this little one over here is the XPG Invader X Mini. As you can see, it's much smaller than the other two cases we looked at. First of all, you might be thinking, what's going on here with the side panel on the side and on the front? Now this is their mirror. This is their XPG Ambassador. If you go to their website, they have some comics. It's the anime they have, and you can check out all of that. But this is just done purely for their show build. It won't come with this wrap on the side. Now just let me take this off so we can see inside a little bit more. Now surprisingly, this case actually does house a full standard ATX motherboard, and that's what is in there now. And then we have the standard length video card. For things like dimensions and all of that, these will definitely have to be weighted until I check these out for review. So I will hit up uh, XPG to see if they can send me these to review. Um, the other two I have looked at, but I haven't reviewed those, so maybe it might be good that I can do a full suite, especially on the Invader X Pro, uh, that case, is looking really good with the full curved glass so i would like to review that one and then possibly this one as well because everyone does like their smaller cases especially that can fit aetx motherboards and then standard video cards as well now of course psu goes down the bottom and i don't know if i mentioned this but this doesn't support the uh, btf uh, form factor only the previous two i looked at supports that form factor and as i said all prices and etas for these cases i will put them in the description as well now we'll take a look around the back just so we can see how things like cable management and all things look like that now for the cooling support as you can see 240 all-in-one cooler up the top two 120 uh, mil fans down the bottom and then we have the 120 mil rear fan and these will be out in both the black and white as well now that's it on these three cases from xpg we have one last interesting device to have a look at Alrighty guys, I now have Luca from Head of Products at XPG. Now what awesome little device do we have here? Well, first of all, it's so great to see you. And I have to say, you're the lucky guy that gets to see this for the first time. You're the only person outside of the company that, has, uh, that is going to see this first. Oh, well, that, is, that is very awesome, I can't wait. Okay, and this is XPG Nia. And so this is our foray into uh, the gaming handle business. So let me show you, this is essentially our first uh, foray into what uh, the handheld business will look like from XPG. So I've seen a lot of handhelds coming to market from a lot of different brands. What makes yours unique or different to all these others? Well, I would say that one of the things that we are very different is the type of focus, right? Uh, first of all, uh, one of the key uh, points of these devices to be very strong in terms of ergonomics, like you don't have to, your wrist relax when you, when you hold it. Uh, you also have a kickstand that helps you to elevate the, the device and also to fight against the turtleneck. Then you actually have the capability to hold the display up. And so when you use it, you don't actually have to use it um, by curving your neck. Okay, so the second key item is that we are building this mainly for the modding market. And so this means that uh, what we're gonna do is not only, first of all, we're gonna be the first gaming handle to support uh, uh, LP CAM 2 type of memory model expans expansion. So you're gonna be able to, on the bottom here, you're gonna, the, the panel underneath here will come off and you'll be able to uh, expand your memory module easily, expand your SSD. Uh, we have our own lineup of uh, uh, 2230 SSDs, it's called S55, it's a fantastic product. Uh, not only that, but we will also, and this is my third point, uh, uh, make this uh, one of the first, uh, at least the first uh, for XPG to be a circular computing platform. What that means is that by the time we release this, we're going to release uh, 3D files online, we're going to release the pinout information so that people can mod this uh, very easily. Right? Uh, the key point of doing this is because two years into use of this device, uh, you want to 
change the motherboard, you change the motherboard, the old motherboard, you're not gonna toss it away, you 3D print uh, a, a compatible box, and now you can use it like a, uh, an Arduino-like or a Raspberry-like board. You can make it into a wireless hub for your kid's room, or you can make it into a remote control for your house, uh, or um, you know, just a file server, whatever you like, right? So you kind of give a second purpose, and uh, we are very, very keen in a data and XPG on the fact that we want to be a very strong ESG player in the market. So this is important for us. Okay, so it seems like you've been developing this for quite a while now. You haven't just thrown this together just for Computex. Uh, we haven't thrown this together for Computex. We have been uh, talking about this for a long time and uh, working on uh, several prototypes for a long time. Uh, we have multiple prototyping boards, um, mostly based on AMD Phoenix. We have some versions that are full Phoenix, some other versions that are uh, extreme uh, uh, Z1. The final version, it really depends on what the community will want. Uh, we are considering several scenarios, maybe upgrade to the next generation and uh, come uh, uh, a little bit later next year, or uh, focus on the current generation uh, and keep it uh, constant so that uh, uh, we can have a lower price. So these are scenarios that we are trying to uh, uh, to uh, evaluate. The key important point is, uh, this type of platform category is uh, experience versus performance. So we need to make sure that the experience is top notch before we launch. We don't want to run into some of the debacles that happened to our uh, competitors. All of our competitors in a way or in another kind of fell on their own sword. We don't want that to happen to us. So we are very, we're running extra careful on this. So just a few last things on this. I noticed there's a front-facing camera and also the color purple for, I see the back and some of the button aesthetics. What was the idea around, firstly, I would say the color and then the camera for the front? Okay, the color story is, uh, well, obviously we wanted to look a little bit different from the competition, but the key is that this purple is a specific color that we have designed for our Extreme Saga story. In the Extreme Saga, we have our, one of the main characters called Xenia, she's the goddess of war, and she's also the major brand uh, that we use for notebooks, right? Uh, at the beginning of a story, when Mera, our main brand ambassador, meets her, uh, she forgot her memory and she has only half of her crown that say Nia out of Xenia, and so we thought it was the most appropriate way to have this product named Nia after Xenia because it's a defeature laptop. In a way, it's as powerful as a laptop, but in a smaller form factor. And also, purple and, uh, and gray are her colors. So for the first uh, prototypes, we decided to use their colors. For um, uh, the final version, we haven't decided yet. We will probably go with what the community tells us that they want most likely black. Okay, so for you guys watching, what color or sort of aesthetics would you like? Do you like this, uh, the black, purple, and gray? Would you want to see some other funky colors? Uh, I know some other brands have done white. I but guess the I typical is black. I can tell you one black. thing is, uh, you know, you, you will have the 3D files of this, so print your own color, you know? This is going to be as simple as that. Yeah, I guess that's one thing you can do. Uh, now, moving on to the camera, you had some things you wanted to talk about? Yes, so we are probably one of the very few, if not the only, vendor that is going to ship with, uh, with the camera in front. Uh, there are very specific reasons for this, uh, not only for uh, uh, security reasons, you have Windows Hello for login, you have also the capability to use the camera to protect uh, if somebody's on your back and looking at your, your screen. These are coming, we worked with a eye tracking company from Zurich called uh, Eyewear. And uh, fantastic guys, uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, additional functions, like for instance, uh, you can use uh, eye and head tracking to change the point of view of your screen, so you can kind of get a little bit more in the corner if you're playing an FPS and stuff. Uh, but there is also some specific performance enhancement features that will give us an edge that I cannot talk about yet. Okay, that's, uh, that should be pretty cool. Can't really, can't wait to see that, um, that you can't really talk about. So can you talk about them during Computex? Because this is before, we're actually filming this, before Computex started. Would this be something you announced during Computex or actually at a later date? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, awesome. Uh, last few things on this, uh, price, ETA, anything roughly on those? You know, um, 
the one of the key points is that these products uh, easily can get higher in price. Uh, we think that the sweet spot is uh, between the five hundred to six hundred dollars. We will try as hard as possible to stay on a, on the lowest price point that we can, uh, and uh, we will most likely have uh, uh, have to go direct on selling this. So either through some uh, specific partners uh, uh, selling direct, uh, or you will. Uh, we are discussing heavily internally of doing a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, this is beneficial for us in multiple ways to make sure that we can have this product the best it can be uh, thanks to the commitment of the crowd, right? Obviously, it's a crowded space already, even though it's a new category. It's uh, probably one of the most exciting categories uh, in uh, computer space, especially for gaming right now. Um, we do want to be a player, and we want to make sure we don't fail at this, so that's why we need to have uh, the commitment of our community to be able to move this forward. And that's also the reason why we are introducing it this early. So yeah, it feels really good. I know what you mean by it's the right sort of width for your shoulders, it just locks in. The, uh, the, the thing is the wrist, okay? A lot of the current uh, devices are smaller on the yeah, wrist yeah. because they want you to reach with your thumb from the bottom, but that's actually, that's wrong because uh, that, that means that your rotation of the finger is wrong. Yeah, yeah. And so this is the most natural, closer to what controllers are today. And, and this is one thing. And the other thing is try to move your head up, right? Uh, that's why, I mean, not you. Uh, we are trying to make sure every people yeah. moves their head up. Like right now, you're relaxed. Yeah. Uh, you Just don't feel back. the weight, right? I What's mean, the, um, the rough uh, weight you're thinking? OK, the target is around 680. Uh, we're slightly over right now. We're okay. slightly over 700. But yeah, that's the target. All right, well, thank you for letting me check this out and being the first to see it outside of XPG. So it's been really good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. very happy that you get to see yes. first. Alrighty, so that's it. Taking a look at these few XPG products that are coming out. It was good to take a look at their new HQ, see these new cases, and especially that handheld. Now we have a heap more of the Computex 24 videos coming out. So we'll see you in the next one.